is very loud out there. Again, you can see Air Force One arriving right now at Charlotte Douglas Airport. We are waiting for the president to come off of the plane there. From there, they will go over to CPCC Harris Conference Center again to sign that executive order and then from there on to Carmel Country Club. You know, the unique thing about what you're watching here is that this is a, a very choreographed dance and it happens in city to city to city to city, even in other countries. But the U.S. Secret Service has been out there planning for this arrival and departure eventually later on this afternoon for days and days. That's called the advance team, basically. And, and the pilot of Air Force One, I've seen this happen a couple of times. He is going to park that 747 on a piece of duct tape no wider than like a foot or two. And he's Going to, he does it every time, and it is absolutely astonishing to watch. He's, he has, you'll see some people there. They're going to be directing him, uh, but he is going to be able to put those two front wheels over a piece of duct tape out there. It's, it's astonishing how well and how good they do this. Well, and they have their practice, and they have this cut out for them. Right. You know, the president has been on the campaign trail going around and doing this sort of thing as he goes to support the two Republican candidates here, as we've seen him do across the country for a number of other candidates. Yeah, he's going to be in town. If you're just joining us, the president is going to be in town here uh, probably for about the next three to four hours. Um, as, as Brooke just said, he is uh, campaigning and fundraising for, for two congressional candidates, and then he's going to sign that executive order here in Charlotte over at CPCC. Let's, let's get out to Mark Boyle. He's standing there live with the arrival. Mark? Bill, I mean, this is an impressive sight, no question about it, seeing a 747 like this pull up just right in front of you. You talk about that duct tape and that front wheel parked right on top of it. And we can see right now the engines are powering down and they're bringing out some stoppers where they'll put in front of those tires. And then we'll see these trucks roll out with the stairs and those doors will open and then the president will come out. We're not exactly sure who's with him on the plane. He might be accompanied with some guests on board, Air Force One, as it just parked here just a couple of seconds ago at the Charlotte Douglas Airport. And we wanted to mention that there certainly are uh, quite a few people out here, hundreds of people that have been uh, invited, specific guests to see this happen. And this is, like you mentioned, it, it's certainly a once in a lifetime opportunity for some people to see in person or live like we're seeing it right now, Bill. Thank you. And of course, this all coming on the busy Labor Day weekend as we kick off the travel season here. And uh, just a reminder to you, along with Air Force One and the president being in town, meaning there are a lot of road closures that are going to be happening as that motorcade makes its way from Charlotte Douglas to CPCC and then on to Carmel Country Club, mostly affecting South Charlotte. But it, this could also affect kids as they're getting out of school. Those buses could be delayed getting home. So a few things just to keep in mind. Yeah, let's send things out to, to uh, Anchor Fred Shropshire. Shire. Fred has some special access this afternoon. He's going to be traveling in the motorcade as part of the press corps. Uh, Fred, you're on the other side of the barricade, so you have a very unique perspective there. Yeah, as you can see, if you were taking our shot now even, that we're walking and we're moving closer as uh, the folks are getting off of Air Force One, we expect to see the president flanked by the Labor Secretary, Alexander Acosta, and Linda McMahon, uh, the head of the Small Business Administration. These will be key folks who you will hear speak at uh, CPCC as the president signs that executive order. Um, a number of folks, the people you're seeing getting off of Air Force One now, uh, that is the press corps. This is the group of journalists who travel across the country covering uh, Mr. Trump. So that is who you're seeing get off of Air Force One at, at this moment. And even now you can see how fluid this situation is for us. As we are walking, we are getting even closer uh, to the action, seeing the folks come. And we're probably going to get some instruction on where we will go next at that point. Once this is uh, concluded and the president meets and greets the folks standing by on the tarmac, I'm not sure how my audio sounds. You can still hear me, but we're standing really close. Our access us access to uh, yeah, under the wing, as you can see ahead. And even now, we are asking to get even closer uh, as we're on the move now with the National Press Corps. And we're going to get we're going to check in with Mark Boyle, who is standing by on our platform. Mark, I know that you can see everything unfolding now. We're pretty close here ourselves. Well, yeah, Fred, Fred is, is under the wing literally right now, and we are waiting. The next thing we'll see likely is President Donald Trump come to the door there and come down those steps. Everyone is moving in place. Let's uh, show, show where Fred is right now just to give some folks at home uh, an idea of where Fred is. And you see the limousines here pulling up to the left just in front of Fred. 
they're going to be in place here and then everyone the motorcade will essentially stop and then the president will come down we're not sure how long he's going to be here or if he's going to come and meet some of these uh, families that have come over to see this happen but uh, this is all going to happen fairly quickly we do expect because there is a tight schedule president trump is expected to arrive over at cpcc within the next 10 to 15 minutes if he is going to uh, remain on schedule and he's going to stay there at cpcc for that signing uh, for a little bit of time and then at 5 15 that is when he will depart the country club back to charlotte so he'll be over at the carmel country club for about a two-hour window around three to five o'clock and then come back everyone's been talking about the traffic the traffic shouldn't be too much of an issue because they're essentially rolling roadblocks and the, the, the roads will open up for the president as he goes by which is standard and then the roads will open back up the airspace out here charlotte douglas already opened up we see airplanes coming and going so uh, as we keep the shot up for you we're going to have this locked in place we're waiting right now for president donald trump to step to the door there and walk down he's here for that fundraiser if you are just joining us now for uh, mark harris who's running for congress as well as ted budd who's running for congress in a different district on the north side of charlotte Air Force One just landing a short time ago, about uh, 10 or 15 minutes ago. And we, we've been going back and forth with our live shots here with Fred Shropshire. He's going to have a very a unique vantage point. He's actually going to be with the, uh, the media as well as the press corps here as they leave in the motorcade. So we are right now just waiting for President uh, Trump to walk down. Fred, we're going to send things back to you and your view from uh, underneath the wing. Okay, Mark Boyle, thank you very much. Yeah, we have a very unique viewpoint. Uh, just moments ago, before we heard from Mark, we were standing behind the plane. That is the door that we saw the national press exit the plane from. Now you are looking at a live picture of the front of the plane where we expect to see Mr. Trump, President Trump exit at any moment now. The line of folks that you see standing uh, outside of his limo in front of, in front of those stairs, those are the dignitaries um, that we know will meet and greet the president. Um, again, I will say we don't know how much time or if the president will spend any time talking to the group of people standing behind a barrier. Uh, those folks have been invited uh, to see all of this unfold. We see family members and military members who have been waiting for the president to arrive. To get this close to the president, to have this kind of access, is not something that happens every day for those folks. So they are here to show their support, to give a, a, a welcome to the Queen City, if you will, uh, to the president of the United States. Again, as we've been reporting, if you are just now joining us, this is our special edition coverage of President Donald Trump's visit here to the Queen City. His primary focus to one, announce an executive order where he will uh, make an announcement to make it easier for small businesses to offer retirement plans. And then two, he will make his way to Carmel Country Club where he will give a fundraiser for two hotly contested congressional seats uh, that Republicans are trying to hold on to in this midterm election. So this is a very fluid situation for us. I have special access. Uh, we don't know the timing, but we will get our orders pretty quickly when it's time for us to move and, uh, and board the, the motorcade with the press corps. We will do so and have a unique view. Here's the president of the United States making the exit right now. Okay, so you see the president making the exit. One of the first faces he will see, one of the first hands he will shake. Congressman Richard Hudson in the 8th District there to greet the president. And there we are right there, the president greeting those folks, uh, thanking them for their support. The president here really to make an endorsement. The president has been uh, pretty active in the midterm elections. He has a, a, a pretty a pretty active record in endorsing congressional candidates. He's endorsed some gubernatorial races as well. And so he's lending his, his hand into this race as well. The two hotly contested seats here in North Carolina, the GOP is looking uh, to hold on to. Again, we don't know if the president will spend any time greeting uh, and, and, and meeting the folks who are standing behind the barriers uh, that, that we've shown you up until this point. Uh, but I was talking about the executive order that the president is going to sign and that he will announce a little later at CPCC. Uh, that executive order will, will make it easier for, for small businesses to create 
retirement plans. Uh, as it stands, it's a very expensive proposition for a small business. And so larger corporations that have employees that, uh, that have more than 500 employees, say, for example, can defray the cost by spreading them among those employees. But what he would like to see happen uh, through the Labor Department and the Department of Treasury is for them to ease some regulations that will make it easier for small businesses, multiple small businesses, to come together and to share those expenses among one another. Uh, he says that this is a, a bipartisan move, that this is something that's been discussed in, in both houses, the upper house and the lower house, for several years now. Uh, when asked in a conference call whether this is something that would undo an Obama-era uh, piece of legislation, uh, the, the response from, from the officials were, was no, it's not. This is basically just making it easier for small businesses to compete. Uh, they, they're using Bureau of Labor Statistics to say that a third of American workers are not participating in a retirement plan. And so this is a move that uh, he wants to do, he wants to make as a statement as we head into the Labor Day weekend. But again, his, his goal here to make that announcement and then to go to a fundraiser where we expect to hear him throw red meat, uh, so they say. This will be a very receptive audience inside of that country club. Some people paying as much as $25,000 a couple just to stand with the president to take a picture, uh, probably a donation that they would make anyway, but an opportunity to spend some time uh, with the leader of the free world here in the Queen City. And as we take a look at these live images right now, the president greeting those dignitaries and military officials on the ground. From there, the president will get in his motorcade. He will then go on to CPCC, the Harris Conference Center there in South Charlotte, to make that announcement regarding retirement. And then from there, head to Carmel Country Club. And as we've mentioned, we're going to see rolling road closures with this motorcade. It shouldn't be a huge traffic issue, but you can expect to see some delays, especially as we have more traffic for the Labor Day weekend. So Billy Graham Parkway, I-77, Johnston Road, Park Road, those are all areas. Just keep in mind, we're going to see some extra congestion over the next few hours. Yeah, you know what Fred's watching here, uh, and again, Fred Shropshire with a very unique perspective here. He's actually under the wing of Air Force One with photojournalist Mike Hansen. Uh, they are uh, have been granted special access by the White House. They contacted us a few days ago and asked us to be part of the press pool, and Fred has this unique opportunity. So he'll be riding in the motorcade from place to place to place all the way through the departure uh, uh, with Pre President Donald Trump. You know, these things are very, very choreographed. Mark Boyle is back on one of the risers on the other side of the barricade. You know, we were waiting for the president to get off Air Force One. And, and, the, and the way that works is that they move the limo into place before you ever see the president. And they do that as a security procedure. They want the, the limo as a backup uh, a place where they can put the president if, if need be, if something goes horribly wrong. So that's why the delay when he comes off Air Force One, they got to wait and get everything in place. But everything is choreographed almost down to the second. Absolutely. Very choreographed. And again, we see the president here greeting those officials. Let's get out to our Mark Boyle, he is up. He is at Charlotte Douglas Airport. You have a good view of what is going on. Mark, what can you see? Well, we can see, as you uh, have been talking about, President Trump shaking hands and dignitaries as he just got off the plane a short time ago. And you talk about things being choreographed, Bill, and you're absolutely right. When we came here and I was checking in at the press table, I asked the, the, the lady, I said, so did you guys come in this morning for, for the media? She goes, oh, no, we've been here for nearly a week ahead of time to set up and make sure everything is in place. So it's not as if this all just happens a day or two before. Things are in place. Teams are ahead of President Trump and his arrival as uh, that has been happening for quite some time as he's been going place to place. So what you can't see is the motorcade. You see that limousine and President Trump right there in this live picture. To the right, behind Air Force One, there's about 25 to 30 vehicles, staff, media, other members uh, of Congress officials that are in vans and buses waiting to leave the airport here in the motorcade and here comes president trump to, uh, looks like he might take a couple of photos Here's, that's right there an officer who's actually injured in the line of duty both of those uh, officers one on the left and one on the right they were injured in the line of duty in our area a short time ago president trump appears to be walking over to uh be talking to some families as they cheer fred will send you guys move over quickly to president trump all right, Mark Boyle, thank you for that. As you can see, if you are looking at our camera, I don't know which camera you have, but you have an idea, just as our Bill McGinty said, how quickly these things happen and how they are choreographed. 
You see the president making his way to the number of dignitaries who are here just to meet and greet him, to shake his hand. And you can see uh, even children in the front there as he's shaking a woman's hand and he probably meets and greets the little boy with the Mickey Mouse hat on. These are the kinds of moments that these folks relish. This is why they stand out here in this heat. Uh, this is what they want to see. They want to see the president. They want to shake his hand. They want to meet him. Um, but of course, this is all business and it's all choreographed as we've been talking about. The president here for an executive order. Uh, the president here to make some coveted endorsements too. Uh, you know, the president has uh, a total of 54 endorsements that he's made across the country since he's been in office. Only six of those candidates endorsed by the president have lost their primaries or their special elections. Why, 48 have won their races and nominations. So. Uh, his words, his endorsements uh, really mean something in these midterm elections. Uh, to get one of those endorsements is very important to, to the candidates who are running. And, um, you know, it's been said that there's really no, there's not really a rhyme or reason to how the president selects the candidates who he endorses. We know that he did not endorse Mark Sanford, who was running uh, in South Carolina. And Mark Sanford lost his race, um, but in, in, although he was a Republican as well, but he, you know, he is endorsing uh, these two congressmen here in town. Uh, his aides have said that it depends primarily on the chemistry that the president has with, with these candidates who are running for office or, or just how they get along and whether these candidates he feels can forward his agenda. That is how the president makes a, a decision on who he endorses. But, you know, right now, the pomp and circumstance and smiles and handshakes you see, but really this is about business, Bill. And Fred, talk a little bit about the crowd that is out there. This has got to be a moment that is very exciting for them because, as you mentioned, this is just not access that you typically have to the President of the United States. Fred Shropshire literally standing under the wing of a 747 Air Force One, uh, and he is waiting to get into the motorcade. He's been granted some unique access. We keep talking about this. Uh, it, we're the only television station in town to have this kind of access, so this is really a great opportunity, not only for us, but, but for Fred as well. Uh, reporters typically, if you're not traveling with a national press pool, local reporters typically don't get this kind of access. So Fred is going to actually be traveling in the motorcade, and he's going to be going from point A to point B to point C all the way through departure a little bit later on this afternoon with the president. So this is a, a very unique perspective. But, you know, everything happens on the president's time. Uh, if he wants to go over and if he wants to work the rope line, is what they call it, if he wants to do that, then that's what he's going to do. But you saw the limo kind of just back into place there right. behind him as he was walking over. Again, they're always prepared for that. They don't know if he's going to do it or not, but they're always prepared for it, and that's always done as a security precaution. And these are always a fluid situation uh, right. here. We don't have exact times as to when the president will get into the motorcade and continue on. Uh, but we do know that there will be rolling closures along with this as the president moves from the airport there to CPCC, the Harris Conference Center, and then on to Carmel Country Club. A very busy day. But these images truly are unique. You usually do not see this except for on the national media stage. So for our cameras to be this close to the president of the United States, truly a unique opportunity. Yeah, here's what we have behind the scenes for you today, folks. We've got Fred, as I said, under the wing of Air Force One out there on the tarmac, which has got to just be as hot as the face of the sun <laughs> out there. And we got Mark Boyle over on one of those risers uh, with the rest of the local press and some of the national press in those positions as well. And you see all those vans. That's what Fred's going to be loading up into. Uh, the, the press pool uh, has to rally quickly because when the president is ready to go, they will leave you behind if you are not ready to go. So we may not be hearing from Fred anymore. Uh, when we see those vans get into place, everybody's got to file in. And like I said, if you're not there, they're gonna they're not gonna wait for you. You know it's time to move on pretty quickly after that. Abs. Uh, do we have Mark Boyle? We have him available. Yeah, you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I'm here. You hear me okay? We're watching right now President Trump just leaving the group of folks. I, I'm telling you, they are certainly 
elated. They are ecstatic. He spent quite a bit of time, an extended period of time, uh, shaking hands, taking photos, greeting people. Certainly supporters of the president out here. Oftentimes, the president will arrive at his destination and get in his limousine and leave. He did not do that today. Again, though, he is on the campaign trail trying to drum up support for as many Republican candidates as possible. So the president is in that limousine right now. And the motorcade where Fred is, as well as other members of the White House staff, they are getting in place, making sure everything is tidied up, and then they will pull out of here 